Hello and good day. Welcome back to our class. This is Teacher Ona de Guzman and our topic for today is the measure of central tendency of group data. Specifically, we'll talk about the mean, median, and mode of group data. This is for grade 10, quarter 4. Let's recall the measure of central tendency is also described as a single value that is used to describe the middle or center of the data. It provides a suitable way of describing a set of scores with a number that describes the performance of the group data. If we will recall the group data, our data formed by putting all individual observations of a variable into groups so that the frequency distribution of these groups serves as a convenient means of summarizing or analyzing the data. So to illustrate the measures of central tendency of group data, let's consider the data shows the ages of recipient of cash incentive and group data. Find the mean, median, and mode of the distribution. To solve the mean of the group data, let's consider the data here. So the age of recipient and the frequency. So the first thing that we will do is we will add two columns. So we will add for the class mark and this is the product of the frequency and the class mark. Let's recall if we say the class mark is the mid value of the class interval. So what we're going to do is add 80 plus 89 and divided by 2. So we come up with 84.5. Another example is 70 plus 79 divided by 2 that is equal to 74.5. So likewise, so this is how we get 64.5, 54.5, 44.5, 34.5 as well as 24.5 respectively. Another thing, so the class size is the difference of the upper limit and the lower limit plus 1. So example, 29 minus 20 is 90 plus 1. So that is equal to 10. So this is I or the class size. Another example is 39 minus 30 plus 1 is equal to 10. So if we will do the same on 89 minus 80 plus 1, so that is equal to 10. So this is the meaning of the class size. Okay, now, so since we know already the class mark, then if we will multiply the frequency and the class mark, so we have f of or f times x. Example, we have 3 times 84.5, so that is equal to 253.5. 7 times 74.5, so we have 521.5. 11 times 64.5, we have 709.5. So if we will continue the process until 5 times 24.5, so we have 122.5. Now, if we will add all the product of the frequency times the class mark, meaning to say from 253.5 until 122.5, we have the summation of the product of the frequency times the class mark is equal to 2,937.5. Next, the sum of the frequency, meaning to say that is 3 plus 7 plus 11 plus 12 plus 9 plus 8 plus 5 is equal to 55. Now, to find the mean of the group data, we will use the formula. Okay, so that is mean is equal to the summation of the frequency times the class mark divided by n. Recall, this is the mean and summation or the sum of the products of the frequency and its corresponding class mark and n is the total frequency. Since we already computed for the product of the class mark as well as the corresponding frequency and the total of the summation of the frequency times the corresponding class mark is equal to 2,937.5 applying the formula so n is equal to 55 and the summation of frequency times the corresponding class mark so this is equal to 2,937.5 uh, divided by 55 so the mean is equal to 53.41. So this is the group mean. Let's move on for the mean of the group data. 
To solve for the median of the group data, use the formula. So it means that this is the median, while LB sub M is the lower boundary of the median class. Okay, less than CFB is the cumulative frequency immediately below or lower than the median class. F times M is the frequency of the median class. I is the class size. Let's recall how did we compute for the class size. So the class size is the upper boundary minus the lower boundary plus 1. So 29 minus 20 plus 1 is equal to 10. So likewise, the frequency is the summation of this frequency, 3 plus 7 plus 11 plus 12 until 5 is equal to 55. So let's continue to solve for the median of the group data. So let's recall the formula that we will use. This is actually the median of the group data. In order to use this, we will add two columns. So that is the less than the cumulative frequency, and this is the lower boundary. By the way, so in order to get the cumulative frequency, this is 5, we'll start to 5 here. Then we will add 5 plus 8 will give us 13. We will repeat the process. 13 plus 9 will give us 22. And 22 plus 12 will give us 34. 34 plus 11 will give us 45. 45 plus 7 will give us 52. And 52 plus 3 will give us 55. So, the total uh, cumulative frequency is 55, which is equal to your total frequency. The next thing that we will do is determine the lower boundary of each uh, class interval from 20 to 29 so subtract 0.5 to 20 so that is 19.5 repeat the process so 30 is the lower boundary minus 0.5 is equal to 29.5 so this is the lower boundary of the class 30 to 39 again we will repeat the process we have 0.5 so 40 minus 0.5 so we have 39.5 50 minus 0.5 will give us 49.5. 60 minus 0.5 is 59.5. 70 minus 0.5 is equal to 69.5. And 80 minus 0.5 is equal to 79.5. Let's recall, we simply subtract 0.5 to determine the lower boundary of each class interval. Next. So, let's determine the n over 2. So, n over 2, that is the frequency, 55 divided by 2, is equal to 27.5. Okay, so to get that one, so the 27.5 is somewhat between 22 and 34. So, it means our, okay, median class is actually on this group from 50 to 59. Next. So, it means that 49.5 is our lower boundary of the median class. So, that is the value. Next one. So, 22, it means that is the cumulative frequency just below the median class or the cumulative frequency of the median class of so 22. Next. 12, this is the frequency of the median class. Okay, now that we know this value n over 2, the cumulative frequency just below the median class 22. So lower boundary of the median class is 49.5. Okay, the frequency is equal to 12. So this is the frequency of the median class. Then we will substitute. So the value is 49.5 plus 27.5. Minus 22 all over 12 times our i is equal to 10. So that is the class interval. So we have, okay, the median is equal to 54.083, correct to three decimal places. So again, so the median is 54.08 that is rounded to two decimal places. Let's move on to the, okay, the third part. So that is the mode of the group data. So to solve the mode of the group data, we will use the formula. So that is LBMO. Okay, that is the lower boundary of the modal class plus D sub 1 all over D sub 1 plus D sub 2 times I. Recall that this is the mode. Okay, and LBM, okay, sub MO is the lower boundary of the modal class 
D sub 1 is the difference between the frequency of the model class and the next lower class. D sub 2 is the difference between the frequency of the model class and the next after. So that is the absolute value. And I is the class size. Okay? Moving on to apply this one. Okay? So the model class here is actually from 50 to 59. Why? Because it has the highest frequency. If we will recall, the mode mean to say that is the highest frequency in a group data. Since we are looking for the group data or the mode of the group data, we will look for the highest frequency of the model class. So that is actually 50 to 59. Next one. 49.5 is the lower boundary of your model class. So that is 49.5. Next, 12 is the frequency of your model class. So, the frequency just below it is equal to 9. So, to determine your D sub 1, that is 12 minus 1 is in, uh, 12 minus 9 equals 3. Next, so in our D sub 2, that is the frequency of the model class minus the frequency just above it. So that is d sub 2 is equal to 12 minus 1 is equal to 1. Now that we know that this formula, okay, now that we know the, these values, we can simply substitute this to our formula. By the way, the plus size i is equal to 10, okay? So substitute 49.5 plus 3 all over 3 plus 1 times 10. So we come up with the model plus is equal to 57. So therefore, the mode is equal to 57. So that ends our discussion on the measure of central tendency of group data. Again, this is Teacher Onin de Guzman. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified about my new videos. Thank you.